Welcome. In this tutorial, I'm going to give you a short introduction in how to use LogicWorks to draw circuits and run simple simulations. Now, let's get started. Unfortunately, LogicWorks only exists for the Windows operating systems. If you're using macOS or Linux, you will need to either use a virtual machine or something called Wine to install it. To learn how to do that, you can refer to tutorials on the internet. I'm sure you can find plenty of them. For this tutorial, I'm going to focus on using LogicWorks. First of all, click the Create button. Once you do so, you will see the main drawing board appearing. This is where you'll be drawing your circuit. There's a couple of different elements that we'll need to bring to your attention first. First of all is the toolbar. As you can see, on the toolbar, you have a wide variety of different icons that you can choose. We'll cover this a little bit later. There's a couple of important ones. For example, this one is the pointer over here. Next to it is the delete button with which you can delete wires and components. The next important thing is the draw signal. This is the thinner one instead of the thicker one. The thicker one is for buses. The thinner one is for actual wires. We'll discuss some of the others a little bit later. On the bot at the bottom over here, we have the timing diagram. Right now, there's nothing on the timing diagram. And later on, we'll be able to see how to use this. And finally, on the right hand side, we have our library and components. To start drawing a very simple circuit, the first thing I want you to do is to click the selection over here and select the library called Simulation I.O. Once you do that, you'll be able to see a wide variety of different input and output devices. For our input, we'll be using something called the binary switch. I double click binary switch and then my mouse has turned into the shape of a binary switch, I can place it on the drawing board by single clicking like this. To turn it back into my pointer, I can click the pointer button in the toolbar. Now I have my pointer back. The purpose of using binary switches is that it will generate inputs to our overall circuit. Okay, you don't actually need autosave, so I'm going to disable autosave. The purpose of using binary switches is that it will provide input to particular wires. Now, to be able to see these wires, let's get ourselves a binary probe. This can be considered as your output devices. Let's get two of them on the drawing board. The other way to, um, to exit the drawing mode is to click the escape button on your keyboard. And then I'll have my pointer back. To establish connection between two different components, you will need the draw signal tool. Single click and then simply draw a line to connect these two components. To exit the drawing mode, click the ESC button when you're done. In LogicWorks, it is very necessary that you check the connections of your circuit. You want to make sure that your components do not just appear connected, but actually are connected. To be able to do that, single click on the wire to see if the whole area lights up in yellow. If it does, it means the connection is successful. Here is, is an example of incorrect connection. I can drag this thing out. And if it's not, in fact, connected, you won't be able to see the full, full wire being lit up. To change the value currently, provided by the binary switch, single click on the individual switch. For example, now the value is zero on this binary switch. I can change it to one by single clicking it. And as you can see, this is also reflected on the output side. 
Now, let's turn our attention to our libraries again. The next thing I want to do is to use some gates. What I need to do is I can go to library selection and then go to simulation gates. Here you have a wide variety of different components. For this simple illustration, we're going to use AND-2. This means this is an AND gate with two inputs. Aside from this, you also have three input AND gates, four input AND gates, and AND gates with multiple inputs, and several of them inverted. We'll cover that in a later lecture. But for now, use the AND-2. Again, the process is very simple. Double click AND-2, and then your mouse turns into this drawing tool. Place it over here and then hit the escape button. The next thing we can do is we can drag some of our components around. I want to drag my inputs, probes, to the left hand side so it's easier to see. And then I can ex establish connection by extending the wire. Again, make sure you're highlighting it to check if the connection was successful. Sometimes it might not be successful. So it's always important to check. And as you can see, as you branch out a single wire, a solid black dot will appear. Well, I guess in this case it was red, but I think you get what I mean. To check the output, we drag out this wire and then go back to simulation I.O. and find ourselves a probe. Double click, place it on the mat, and then hit ESC. Now we can do a simulation over here to verify the truth table of our AND gate. Remember, an AND gate is only going to output a positive value when both of its input, when all of its input, are positive. So let's see that. Currently, 0, 0 gives you 0, 1, 0 gives you 0, 0, 1 gives you 0, and 1, 1 gives you 1. That is a positive value. In this next example, we're going to construct something a little bit more complex. This is something we've already seen in class with two inputs, some AND gates, and um, as well as OR gates. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to simulation gate. This is one of the circuits inside our lecture video for lecture two. To delete a certain component, there's two different options. You can either select the component and press the escape button, sorry, press the delete button on your keyboard. This will delete this component. The alternative is to use the zap tool to delete components. Both would work just fine. Now let's establish some connections. I'm going to drag these. You can also move things around by selecting them and use the arrow keys on the keyboard. Now I'm going to make some connections. Again, this is the circuit that appears in the first video of lecture two. Obviously, you can also search for components inside the library by using the filter. And now we have a complete circuit. To verify its truth table, you can look for the references inside the lecture video or lecture slide four. Now let's try how it works. Input zero zero gives you an output of zero. Input zero one gives you an output of one. Input one zero gives you an output of one. And finally, input one one gives you an output of one. The next thing I want to demonstrate is the use of timing diagram. To utilize the timing diagram, 
you will need to first of all give names to components. And it's very important that you give names to wires instead of binary, um, sorry, binary switches or binary probes. To do that, first of all, select a wire. You'll see it highlighted in yellow over here. Right click and select a name. Over here, I'm going to say input X. And once I do that, you'll see that a name tag has appeared on top of the wire. The same name will also appear in the timing diagram. You should do the same thing for the rest of the wires you want to appear on the timing diagram. For example, the other input Y. Again, you can move the tag around so that it's easier to see. And for the output side, I'm going to drag it out so I can get access to the wire. Right click and do name. And I'm going to call it output Z. In this case, every single time you change the values for your binary switches, it will appear as a different entry on the timing diagram, a different time step. For example, if I change my input X from 1 to 0, you'll be, able to, you'll be able to see this transition in the timing diagram. I can also flip input Y to 0, or I can just click clicking it for a couple of iterations. One of the things you'll realize is that the timing diagram seems a little bit too compact. The thing you can do is you can go to the toolbar all the way at the bottom over here. And this is the zooming tool. This will allow you to zoom in on the timing diagram. Click it a few times and you'll be able to see very pretty squares appearing. Let's make it even a little bit better. And we can keep drawing our circuit diagrams, sorry, timing diagram. The next tool I'm going to introduce in this tutorial is called a clock unit. A clock unit is a simulation um, component that can generate a constant train of positive and negative signals. To do this, what you need to do is to search for the clock unit in the library simulation IO. First of all, go to simulation IO and then select the clock unit. You drag out the clock unit. In this case, I'm going to replace. Okay, you can already see the timing diagram going crazy. What we can do now is we can stop the simulation by clicking the stop button on the toolbar. I click stop simulator and then this is going to stop. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to replace one of the switches with the clock. I select this switch and then click the delete on my keyboard to remove it and then attach the clock unit. Make sure that it's actually attached by selecting the wire. See if the poking out wire is highlighted in yellow. If it is, it is correctly connected. The next thing we could do is we could attach a different clock to input X. Here, I'm going to copy and paste. If we try to run the simulation now, we're going to need to use this portion of the toolbar. This portion of the toolbar is controlling the simulation speed. As you can see, currently it says time step um, 25,700 something. What we want to do is first of all, we need to do single step simulation. Here, it's going to reset the value to zero because we previously stopped a simulation. Now, once we do single step, you can see the time step increasing by one and new values are being outputted on the timing diagram. Let's keep doing single steps.
What happens over here is that input x and input y are both generating a constant train of positive values followed by negative values and a positive value and then followed by a negative value. The duration of this um, value change is determined by the frequency. Here we can right click on our clock and select attribute. Remember now you're selecting the clock and checking its attribute. It's not individual wires anymore, it's the clock unit. If you do this, you'll be able to see certain options. What you need to do is to click delay. What this does is that it will tell you the frequency upon which is generating positive pulses. Currently, it's going to generate a positive pulse every 10 time steps and then a negative pulse for next 10 time steps. So we can change that to 20 and 20. So it will generate a positive pulse for 20 time steps and then a negative pulse for 20 time steps and go back. When you're done, click the but done button and then we can stop the simulator and restart it. The reason why we're doing single steps is because this is a slightly better way of seeing some of these slight changes in values. If you click Run Simulator, this is going to run at full speed, which is going to be very, very fast and hardly enough time for you to see what's going on. Over here, you can see input X is generating a constant train of positive, positive signals every 10 time steps and then a negative value for the next 10 time steps. This is in contrast to input Y, where input Y first of all starts with 20 time steps of, neg uh, of negative time signals and then 20 time steps of positive and then goes back on again. If you look at individual time steps, like time units, you'll be able to cover in this way all of the input combinations for input X and Y. Over here we have um, from time step 0 to time steps 10 we have 0 0, 10 to 20, 0 1, 20 to 30, 1 0, and then finally 30 to 40, 1 1, and then going back to 0 and 0. It is also very important to point out that even though we don't generally care about gating delay in our course, they do exist and it is showing up in the timing diagram simulation over here. As you can see, the change of value in output Z is a little bit delayed comparing to the input X and input Y. This is, the present, this is caused by the presence of gating delay. Oh, before we end, of course, it is very important that you save whatever you have already drawn. To do that, go to File, and then you can save your circuit. Save it something um, to somewhere on your computer that you can remember. For me, I can save it under my user folder, desktop, and then I call it circuit1.cct. This is what you will need to do for your lab work. Okay, I guess this is a good time to end the tutorial. If you have any questions implementing these circuits, please send me a message or leave a comment below. Thank you.